All right. Um, let me tighten my microphone for some reason. It's loose. I wanted to get into the case that everyone knows about, and it happened so long ago. But it's the case that got me into true crime in general. And um, as you can tell by the title, it is the Casey Anthony case. Uh, this is a 43 minute, 53 second video. I try to find something that's remotely under an hour just in case something pops up and I got to pause it and go tend to whatever. But we're going to go over all of the this is kind of like a all in one and then debating on what responses just like i say in every other video we can go deeper um i did recently over the last two months i rewatched the entire trial well i listened to the entire trial over again and um yeah that's just such a hard case and then prior to that one i did the chris watts um which I do want to do that one as well. So, um, and also talk about his mistress and how I believe that she had something to do with it. But for today, we're going to get into the Casey Anthony case. 911, what's your emergency? Yeah. I found out my granddaughter has been sick and she has been missing for a month. Her mother finally admitted that she's been missed, so I need to find her. There's something wrong. I found my daughter's car today, and it smells like there's been a dead body in the damn car. Okay, what is the three-year-old's name? Kaylee, C-A-Y-L-E-E, -E, Anthony. More than a decade after the O.J. Simpson murder trial captivated people around the world, another murder case made its way onto our TV screens and another name became infamous. In 2008, a missing toddler from a quiet Orlando suburb became the focus of international news. This case is so close to home um i actually have been to kaylee's resting place um where they found her body and um it's about 20 minutes from where i live um it's just it's a this entire case is a tragedy her mother's name was casey anthony and her trial for the little girl's death would grip the nation The Anthony family was a really typical looking family. It was a cop, a nurse, their two children. And then the daughter had a baby. None of that is out of the ordinary. At the center of this case, we had a beautiful little girl and she was missing and it was a mystery and we didn't know why, but what we did know was that mom was out partying while the baby was missing. Without even seeing his face that is judge belvin perry and man i know he wanted to sentence casey anthony and he's got some uh he, he has the same beliefs that all of us people with brains have um about casey anthony don't have someone stop me on the street and somewhere during that conversation they asked, I wonder what really happened to Kelly. Anytime a, a young mom is charged with killing her children, it makes the headlines because that is such an aberration, is such a deviation from what young mothers are. Casey, you don't realize that the whole United States is looking for our Kaylee. Um, Can you look up a little bit more? Raise your eyes up a little bit. There you I go. So now... 
So a couple months ago when I was re-watching this trial, these phone calls were admitted in discovery and a part of the trial and the way that this woman makes me feel, Casey Anthony, is unreal. The anger is unreal. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who thinks that. Look straight up so I can look into your eyes, darling. Thank you. She did appear normal. I think she's about as abnormal as she can get. But I think people wanted her to show some emotion. She never did. Come to order, all right? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you have been selected and sworn as the jury to try the case of the state of Florida versus Casey Marie Anthony. Does the state care to make an opening statement at this time? Yes, Your Honor, we would. You may proceed. This is the case of the state of Florida versus Casey Marie Anthony. However, it is time to tell the story of a little girl named Kaylee. George Anthony specifically. Also, if you don't know, Jeff Ashton, um, the other lead prosecutor on this case, wrote an amazing book after this case. And um, yeah, I, don't, I think a lot of people don't know that, but it's a great book. You should look into it if you haven't. I recalls that at 12.50 p.m. on June 16th of 2008, George Anthony kissed his granddaughter goodbye and never saw her again. His daughter, PC, left the residence on Hope Spring Drive with Kaylee Marie Anthony. She told her mother that she was going to spend the night with a babysitter by the name of Sam. You will learn there is no Sam. The body of Kaylee Marie Anthony had been wrapped in a Winnie the Pooh blanket and thrown into a littered swamp like she was just another piece of trash. Kaylee's death allowed Casey Anthony to live the good life, at least for those 31 days. Everybody had convicted Casey Anthony in the court of public opinion long before she ever walked in that courtroom. And so Jose Baez and his group of attorneys had to undo that with these jurors who had all kind of heard about the case. The media latched onto this case. My job was to save Casey Anthony from the death penalty if the case went south and for whatever reason a jury came back that she was guilty of first degree murder. My job was to try to save her life. I believe we could have mitigated the death penalty. How in the world can a mother wait 30 days before ever reporting her child missing? It's insane. It's bizarre. Well, the answer is actually relatively simple. She never was missing. Kaylee Anthony died on June 16, 2008, when she drowned in her family's swimming pool. We've got great news for seniors. The Social Security Administration has made a... As soon as Casey came around this corner and went back, she saw George Anthony holding Kaylee in his arms. She immediately grabbed Kaylee and began to cry. And this is the story um, that she continued to stick by in the Peacock series that came out like two years ago. And somewhat of the story, I'm not sure if it's the exact same thing, but... Death was covered up. This family must keep its secrets quiet. And it all began when Casey was eight years old and her father came into her room and began to touch her inappropriately. Casey has a brother. When he was a teenager, he attempted to also touch his sister. 
Casey was raised to lie. That will help you understand why no one knew that her child was dead. We were finding out all this dysfunction in this family, all these lies, all these secrets, all this backbiting that was going on in this family before Kaylee even went missing. That Casey was willing to at least accuse her father and her brother of molesting her so that she could get out of jail for killing the baby. That's not a normal family. That's dysfunction. Is your daughter there? Yeah, can I speak with her? Hello? Hello? Yes. Hi. Can you tell me a little bit what's going on? My daughter's been missing for the last 31 days. Who has her? Do you, do you have a name? Her name is Zenaida Fernandez-Gonzalez. Who is that? Babysitter? She's, she's been my nanny for about a year and a half, almost two years. You know, why, why are you calling now? Why didn't you call 31 days ago? I've been looking for her and have gone through other resources to try to find her. Is that right there? Depressed? No, sir. Scared? No, sir. She was partying and having a good time. Did she tell you that her daughter was missing? No. Did she ever tell you that her daughter had been kidnapped? No. That she was missing? No. 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 No, sir. No, sir. Did you ever ask the defendant where Kaylee was. Yes, sir, I did. What did she tell you? No, she was at Disney World with the nanny. She said she was with the nanny. She told me that she was spending the weekend at the beach with the nanny. Did Casey Anthony ever tell you that her daughter was missing? No, sir. That she was looking for? Her? No. That she needed any help? No. No, sir. Did she ever cry? No. Did she ever act scared? No. At any time during this night, did she ever tell you that her child was missing? No, sir. Once the jury was there, I think they hated Casey Anthony. Well, you could tell. They would glare at her. They didn't like her. They would um, shake their heads when they'd see pictures of her dancing on tables and everything. Nobody knows where she is, but all we know is that mom, Casey Anthony, was out partying when she should have been looking for her daughter. I cannot concentrate because my tortoise is... Her cage is right next to me, and she is scraping at her fucking bedroom wall. Like, she's pissed. I hope she doesn't shit or piss. Here she is, guys. She's mean. No, I'm just kidding. She's not. She's a little far Good girl. I wash my hands. Anyways, I can always hear her through the mic for through my headphones, and I'm like, oh my god, it drives my. Freaking OCD crazy. Okay. How come everybody's saying that you're not upset, that you're not crying, that you show no caring of where Kaylee is at all? I'm not sitting here crying every two seconds because I have to stay composed to talk to detectives. You have to tell me if you know anything about Kaylee. Wait, if anything happens with Kaylee Casey, I'll die. You understand? I'll die. If anything oh, happens wow. to that baby. Oh my God, calling you guys? A waste, huge waste. There's a hidden five minute credit trick that millions of Americans are using to send their scores soaring. Have you- Everything is coming out of your mouth in a lie. Everything. And what happened to Kaylee? I don't know. I'm sure you do. I don't know. More personal, personal loan. As details of the Anthony case unfolded each day, Public interest intensified, along with protests and anger towards Casey and even her family. On many days, tension outside the courthouse was matched by the friction inside the courtroom. We're talking about cold, hard evidence. And he could get up here and lie all he wants and dance around the truth, but the truth is the truth. And, he, and depending on who's asking the questions, whether it's this laughing guy right here or whether it's myself. Objection. Approach the bench. 
This case was the craziest case I've ever been involved in. It was like the Hatfields and the McCoys, and they were using profanity at each other just in the regular course of business. How is the good faith basis relevance of that? That is not the question counsel asked, and he darn well knows it. Anything else, folks? The prosecution and the defense of the Casey Anthony case couldn't stand each other. Sometimes nobody could see it but those of us in the gallery. Watching them backbite each other, watching them snip at each other, watching them roll their eyes while somebody on their own team was up there, you know, cross-examining a witness. Approach the sidebar and cut the comments out. The level of tension in this one here was probably, it was a 10. My major concern was one courtroom control. What is that symbol that you are projecting with your fingers? Um, using my middle finger, and I am sorry. Okay, and, and, and what does that mean, sir? The F word to someone. At this time, I will adjudge you to be guilty. I will sentence you to six days in Orange County Jail, or he will be remanded. I don't I remember that. I don't remember that. I don't remember that. Uh, and I don't remember, I didn't hear any of this. There, The guy that I rewatched the trial through, his name is David Lohr, L-O-H-R on youtube and he like cuts all the sidebars and all that stuff out maybe he i'm assuming that he cut this part out and i don't remember seeing it in 2011 but what the hell clear that i was not gonna tolerate anyone breaking any rules be it the prosecution the defense or the public i've never seen so many people so invested in the outcome of a criminal case Everybody had adopted Kaylee Anthony as their own, and they wanted to avenge her death in some way. They said that the person that you dropped Kaylee with doesn't even exist. Because, oh, look, they can't find her in the Florida database. She's not just from Florida. They need to look up her information in a New York database, in a North Carolina database. Remember when I talked about who was there? Some, some, there's another case that was somebody super freaking crazy that can come up with lies at the drop of, I mean, just off the top of their head. This is a different, it might be on my, it might be a video that I made on my TikTok. This is a different type of fucking crazy that is scarier. And it, what's even scarier is that this woman is out free she's apparently in tennessee now thank god she's out of our state uh with a married man that has children so and i also looked up jose baez and jose baez is aging very nicely i just i'm i'm let's look him up really quick i i have to share this with you guys because he he really got on the whole, um, he's like, that this case really made him huge, huge. And then also Aaron Hernandez, I forgot about that. But I just feel like now he looks so good. I hate, I mean, I hate him. What the hell's with this? I hate when I can't just look at something. I think he looks good though. Like he aged very well. I think he got veneers too. I was trying to figure that out. Wow. I think he's in New York now. I think that's his main. I was looking at his, um, Yep. While he won an acquittal in the Casey Anthony murder trial. It's crazy. Anyways. Other places that she's lived outside of Florida. 
On Monday, June 9th, 2008, between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m., I, Casey Anthony, took my daughter, Kaylee Marie Anthony, to her nanny's apartment. Zenaida Fernandez hyphen Gonzalez has watched her for the past year and a half to two years. However, after reaching the apartment, I realized that neither Zenaida, Kaylee, or either of her two roommates were home. Did you determine whether or not an individual by the name of Zenaida Gonzalez had been the last occupant of that apartment? I researched the prior occupants of that apartment, and it was not Zenaida Gonzalez who occupied it. I think it's really simple. I think that she wanted a party. I think that she had looked at different ways to knock the child out, and maybe she'd done it before successfully. That Zanny the Nanny reference. You know, like Xanax for the baby. That's really the keeper of the child. Everything's coming out of your mouth in a lie. Everything. So I can look at you in one of a couple of ways. I can look at you as a person who's scared, who's concerned, or we can look at you as cold, callous, and a monster who doesn't care, who's just trying to get away with something that, that something bad that happened and trying to cover it up. Mm-hmm. Or we're not stupid, okay? And what you're doing right now is you're, you're treating us like we're stupid. It would have been very hard for Casey Anthony to take the stand because Casey Anthony had lied so many times. So what would she do under cross-examination? The defense team knew that Casey couldn't take the stand. Casey? Mom. Hey, sweetie. Oh, I just saw your nice little cameo on TV. You don't know what my involvement is and stuff? You're not telling me where she's at because I don't know where she's at. The parents didn't believe her from the jump. The parents knew. Especially that mom. That mom freaking knew that that Casey knew what happened to that baby. And that's why both of them coddled her and approached her in such a way that they didn't want to piss her off. And you can tell by how they, they communicate with each other and how they talk to each other. They're like, oh, well, that was a nice little cameo. You don't know what involvement I have. And I'm like, Kaylee or Casey, 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 Bonnie, we just want to make sure we know where Kaylee is. They knew that she knew what happened to that baby. Anybody who thinks anything different, I'm sorry. You're crazy. Are you kidding me? I don't want to talk to you right now. Forget it. The woman on the tape was someone who was completely in charge. She would be demanding. She would speak up. She would challenge them. I called to talk to my mother, and it's a waste. They had to do something to counter all the video that we were seeing in court of her yelling at her parents and swearing at her parents. At the beginning of the trial, she was a little bit more defiant. She was outraged that she was on trial for this. And at some point, we started seeing Casey Anthony wearing blouses that came up to her neck so that, you know, with a big bow on it to look as innocent as possible. They even lowered her seat so she looked smaller than everybody else on the defense table because what they were trying to do was show this is a girl who could never kill anybody. Now, what happened to Kaylee? I don't know. I'm sure you do. I you don't know. Something's all right. I'm guessing something bad happened to her some time ago, and you haven't seen her. Is she someone else? No, she's either in a dumpster right now, she's buried somewhere. Uh, I'm a meter reader with Orange County, and I had the route today that included the Anthony's home. Uh, I noticed something that looked white, and there was a, uh, like a gray bag down in there. As the search efforts for Kaylee Anthony stretched into five months, the news spread like wildfire that human remains had been discovered not far from the Anthony home. I'm a meter reader with Orange County, and I had the route today that included the Anthony's home. And there's a lot of swamp back in there. Well, back behind one of the trees down there was a gray bag, and then a little bit further up than that, I saw something white. And it would be on the right hand side that I, I saw what I saw. There have been uh, significant uh, skeletal remains uh, located late this afternoon. The skeletal remains are still the consistency of a small child. The discovery comes a week after a child's skull was found in a nearby wooded area 
blocks away from where the two-year-old lived with her mother and grandparents. We have secured the Anthony house. Uh, we've also exhumed the remains, and uh, that has been transported to the medical examiner's office. Did you receive results from the FBI as to the identification? And yes, that is Dr. G. Um, and this gets, if they are going to play most of the parts that I think they are, it's going to get a little graphic. Of the remains. Yes. And did that laboratory identify the remains as that is Kaylee Marie Anthony? Yes, they did. They found um, duct tape. And they actually did a graphic of the four parts of the skull and put it back together for the jury so that they could see the duct tape around the child's face. Do you have an opinion as to the manner of death in this case? It is a red flag that when a child is not reported immediately to authorities, that's something we look for for foul play. Besides the delay, besides the being found in a field um, decomposed, would be the duct tape somewhere located on the lower half of this face. There is no child that should have duct tape on its face when it dies. Based on the skeletal condition of the remains, can you render a medical conclusion on the cause of death? What I put was homicide of undetermined means. Well, someone just said that Kaylee was dead this morning, that she drowned in the pool. That's the newest story out there. Surprise, surprise. There's the proof that she could easily get outside. There's the proof that she was big enough and strong enough to open the door. You can't get anything better than that. And look at how soft Cindy is holding her or touching her. She's on her own. And look at what Kaylee's doing. Kaylee's diving in a... So the defense doesn't have to have their own story. They just have to poke holes into the state's story. But... They created a story, and I, clearly, it worked. Because she walked away from this, acquitted. That water. When the defense gave their opening statement and said, Kaylee Anthony was found face down in the pool, what the prosecution should have done at that point was to say, when you find your baby face down in the pool, you call the police, you call an ambulance because you don't know if she's dead or not. And if you decide then to put duct tape around her and wrap her body in a trash bag and throw it in the woods, that is aggravated child abuse. That's a 15 year charge. They wanted a first degree charge so much that they didn't bother to explain the child abuse. George began to yell at her. Look what you've done. Your mother will never forgive you, and you will go to jail for child neglect for the rest of your freaking life. Why did George do this? Why didn't he call him? You started off with pointing the finger uh, at George, the, the father. You start questioning his credibility, his believability, so you would discount his particular testimony. and. What they did was they created a, a ball of confusion. Were you present in your home when Kaylee Anthony died? No, and when I heard that today, it hurt really bad. Because if I would have known something. I have to say that other than being so freaking sorry for Kaylee Anthony, the baby. I feel so bad for these parents. I just can't imagine 
not only losing their granddaughter, but then their daughter completely creating a story to cover her ass without a care in the world of how it was going to hurt them. Don't what happened to Kaylee, we wouldn't be here today. Did you dispose of the body of your granddaughter? No, I did not. Mr. Baez, what would you see to determine whether someone drowned? Well, if a body's the, not found in a pool... To answer the court's question, um, the court's question, I believe, was what record evidence is there that the victim drowned? The answer is none. Casey is staying with her boyfriend, Tony, and sadly, Kaylee is in all likelihood in the trunk. It was an odor consistent of what I'd smelled in the past when it comes to decomposition. Uh, it's not a smell that you forget. Lee 39.95. Forensic science took center stage at the Anthony trial. Over several weeks, 37 expert witnesses took the stand. But would any one of them sway the jury? I am a forensic chemist examiner. Canine handler. Hair and fiber examiner. Professor of anthropology. Geologist, forensic examiner. Forensic toxicologist. Computer examiner. Human identification laboratory. In the latent print operations unit. My specialty is analytical chemistry. Insect evidence. Did you find any hairs that showed evidence of um, apparent decomposition? That's okay. um, one of the items showed, uh, had a hair that exhibited characteristics of decomposition. I think you had a death scene where Kaylee probably perished. It was the trunk of that car, and that's why she'd been in the car, and that's why she lied so much, and that's why she waited so long, and the fact that she waited so long and saying anything meant that child was so decomposed they didn't know the cause of death. Have you ever had the opportunity uh, in your 30 years in the towing business to come across a vehicle in which there had been a dead body? Yes, ma'am. Were you able at that juncture to make any connection? It was an odor consistent of what I'd smelled in the past when it comes to decomposition. Uh, it's not a smell that you forget. Based on my 23 years experience, my opinion is that it w was the smell of human decomposition. That trunk smelled like a dead body. The trunk of my daughter's car smelled like human decomposition. He was a cop. He knows what a dead body smells like. Casey's mother was a nurse. She knows what a dead body smells like. When someone dies, the gases that are produced from the bacterial metabolism have really no place to escape. And we began monitoring which chemicals are being produced. There was one um, expert who supposedly had a detector, a, a sniff test detector. It was the most ridiculous thing I had ever seen. Do you have an opinion as to whether... That expert was freaking amazing. And for somebody to be so ignorant to say, oh, he had a sniffing detector. Sh shut up. Shut up. Don't, don't underestimate that man. That man was smart as hell. There was a decomposing human body in the trunk of that car at some point. I do have an opinion on that. And what is that opinion? Uh, I can find no other plausible explanation other than that. You know that your findings are not generally accepted in the scientific community, do you not? Objection. Sustained. Strike. Granite. 
He was arguing that he could somehow sniff the air in the person's car and determine that it was the result of a decomposing human body. They put this, this what I would call a junk scientist on the stand to testify. And the significance of the evidence, uh, such as the, the smell of death, what that really meant, the fact that you had the canned hair in the trunk of the car. I know the defense wanted to call some of it voodoo science. I, I call it cutting edge science uh, that uh, basically had support in the literature and uh, scientific background. What chemical compounds did that initial evaluation show? Now, the large peak was identified as chloroform because the chloroform was shockingly high, unusually high. And the thought was that perhaps uh, Casey had used chloroform just to put her to sleep and to, so she could go out. I heard, and don't know whether it's true or not, that, that that was done from time to time and maybe in earlier years uh, when people didn't understand how dangerous it was uh, and that she accidentally killed her. Any clues or anything that I should focus on at the house? Mom's house, your house. Um, outside of maybe stuff on the computer, nothing I can think of. On the computer. They late in the trial got into some of the internet searches that were done, and and then they tried to attribute them to Casey Anthony. She had researched chloroform. Were you asked to perform a keyword search for chloroform? Yes, I was. A certain level of dysfunction. So there is now a verdict watch um, for the Melody Ferris trial right now. I am going to, that was at, that's on my list, to um, cover. I just, if you follow me on social media, especially TikTok, you'll know that I don't get into trials until like, basically they're like the last few days, unless it is um, like something that's happening in my town. Um, but I will make a video about that, but Vinny Paulson just showed up on my notifications and they are on verdict watch for Melody Ferris. So, um, I'll get into that case. Hopefully what's today, Wednesday, by the end of the week. Um, in this case with the chloroform keyword search hit, we were able to recover a complete, uh, internet history from Mozilla Firefox. All right, so if the user at the time typed in how to make chloroform. Yes. The prosecution said that Casey Anthony used chloroform to kill her child. But I sat there in trial the entire time paying attention to every word. I still don't know how do you make chloroform. I have no idea. What are the ingredients? Did Casey ever buy those ingredients? Do you have any proof that she did? We never saw that. So that's a big piece of the puzzle missing. In our case, there has been no evidence presented that Casey Marie Anthony used duct tape for any purpose, that she used chloroform ever for any purpose, and that in any way, in any capacity whatsoever, she contributed to the cause of death of this child. It is forcing, guessing, and speculation. Jurors don't know anything. You're painting a picture on a canvas. Everything that you want them to see, you got to paint it in that picture. The defense not only did that, but they did something that uh, most people yes. really didn't notice they were doing. They were throwing out reasonable doubt in every corner that they could. You know, of course, that sex with a child under the age of 12 years old is life in prison, don't okay. you, sir? Relevance. This thing. Only on Court TV. At week number four in the Casey Anthony trial, tempers flared as the defense doubled down on the strategy they had floated in opening statements. Destroy the credibility of George Anthony. Ms. Burdick, you may proceed. Casey's car was in Orlando. Yes, ma'am. Once the car is in the garage, do you access it in some fashion? Yes, ma'am. Um, Casey's purse was on the front seat. 
and that um during this part this the mother was still in the stage of trying she has accepted that kaylee is now passed away and she's trying not to lose the relationship with her daughter and you can feel that by how she testifies on the stand um it's it's crazy to me um but I guess in a kind of a chaotic sense, it, it makes some sort of sense of I lost my granddaughter. I don't want to lose my daughter, too. And clearly this is a very dysfunctional family from what it seems like. Um, I mean, their daughter is on trial for capital crime. Um, but yeah, so. Kaylee's baby doll her favorite doll her favorite doll was in the um car seat like it was sitting where kayla would have sat i think cindy anthony was a compelling witness there were times where she burst into tears on the stand she was doubled over in agony as she's listening to the 911 calls and i think that the jury their heart went out to her when you look at the dynamics of the testimony of George and Cindy Anthony, you, you really look at the ebb and flow of, of that particular trial. Can I have a break, sir? Can I have a break? A drink? A break. Okay, let's take a uh, five minute recess. All right, Here you have these loving grandparents who would move heaven and earth for their granddaughter. But also you have them in the unenvious role of being the parents of the person who's accused of murdering this child. You got Cindy faced with this proposition. Her testimony not only could lead to her daughter being found guilty of murder in the first degree, but it could also lead to the imposition of the ultimate sanction of death. That's false, George Anthony. In January, late January of 2009, you attempted to commit suicide. The defense didn't try to throw George Anthony under the bus. Did you, sir? Yes, sir, I did. The defense threw him under the bus, backed up the bus, ran over him again, backed it up again, and ran over him again. So you were drinking beer and blood pressure medication? They crucified him in court. You, you have to be specific with me, sir. Give me give me a date, well, and I'll answer. I'm giving you a date, but my question is... No, sir, you're, 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 you are Listen. badgering me. You're trying to get me upset, sir. I'm just asking you. Treat me with a little bit of respect and you'll get respect back. That's all I'm asking. Mr. Anthony, do, do, would you like to answer my question now? Objection to counsel's commentary. And I don't think that the jury necessarily believed what they were saying, but George started to show this, this defiant side of him. Mr. Anthony, do you know a woman by the name of Crystal Holloway? I know her by that name and also another name. Did you have a romantic relationship with her? Uh, no, sir. No. To, to me, that's that's uh, that's very funny. Very funny. Yes, sir. George Anthony is now a cop with a chip on his shoulder, testifying, and he looked like yeah, he probably could have done something wrong, which I think came directly from him being accused of something that he says he didn't do. The defense calls Crystal Holloway. Did you develop a relationship with Mr. Anthony? Yes, sir. I did. Was this an intimate relationship? Yes. Did there ever... The defense came in so many different angles in this case that they planted so much reasonable doubt up to the point to where they're bringing in a random woman that had some kind of sexual affair with George Anthony. And she says... And then you're about to hear her testify that there was some accident that spiraled out or snowballed out of control. 
they just poked so many holes. Now looking at this case, I can understand why a juror would say there's, they don't even know, you know, these experts don't even know what would make chloroform. This wasn't fully, they don't, they're not 1000% sure if this was found in the trunk. Um, the dad is having an affair. Um, now there's SA allegations, you know, I still to this day would say that Casey Anthony unalived her daughter. Um, but I will also say that the defense did their job when it came to poking so many fucking holes for the fucking boat to sink. And I think that the prosecution could have stepped up a little more, even though I hate saying that because I think they did amazing but it was when I when I re-listened to this trial, it was just seriously such a freaking circus. I was like, whole, like trials don't happen like that nowadays. Like there's no like back talk and forth to each other, maybe here and there, but ever come an occasion where you had a heart to heart conversation with George Anthony as to what happened to his granddaughter? Uh, he was sitting on my couch and he had told me, he had said it was an accident that snowballed out of control. Cross-examination? Mm -hmm. How much money did you get from the National Enquirer for selling your story? The $4,000. $4,000. If you get injured in an accident, even as just a passenger, no one knows this, but you can turn that act. You may be seated. All right, gentlemen. You know, of course, that sex with a child under the age of 12 years old is life in prison, don't okay. you, sir? Relevance. Sustain. You're aware of the possible penalties of child molesting, don't okay. you, sir? Objection. Relevance. Sustain. You, of course, would never admit to a molesting your child, would you, sir? Objection. Argumentative. There was an insinuation here, I think, that perhaps George had somehow been responsible in some way for the death of uh, Kaylee, and that Casey's reluctance to turn on her father had something to do with uh, the fact that he had been abusing her. Sir, I would never do anything to harm my daughter in that way. Only in that way. Objection. Yes, sir. Right. Sustain. You don't talk about a fact if you know that there is not a way to prove it. And, and generally, the only way to prove something is through testimony of an individual. I don't believe that Jose uh, or Jay intended on calling Casey as a witness. So it was unclear to me how they were going to prove up those accusations. I do think that the defense did a really good job of confusing the issues. Maybe it was George Anthony. Maybe it was somebody else. We don't know. Maybe it was the meter reader. Were you aware of there being a reward offered for a finding of Kaylee? And by the time we were done with seven weeks worth of trial, everybody looked guilty. The prosecutor set themselves a very tough bar in seeking death. Every piece of evidence is is weighed under a microscope by the jurors. If there's any flaw or any missing link, no matter how apparently insignificant it, it may be, it's not insignificant to a, a death penalty jury. Uh, I think that you'll see that despite the outcry, the notoriety, the emotions, so forth, the case is not here. State recognized presence of the jury. Good day, Your Honor. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Have you reached a verdict? Sir, sir. And each count. I will never forget this day. I was seven months pregnant. My uncle from New York was in town, and we had just got back from Chick-fil-A. 
And we rushed home because I had gotten notified on my phone that the verdict was coming in. I think it was like 15 minutes that you have or 20, 20 like 15, 20 minutes you have before they, everybody gets in. And we were at my grandparents' house and I believe later that night I ended up in the hospital because I got contractions so bad from being so upset. But I also was pregnant with twins. I was always in the freaking hospital was being read what went through my mind was holy shit, this is never going to go away we are going to be talking about this in five years 10 years 20 years after five weeks of testimony in the anthony trial the seven women and five men on the jury prepared for closing arguments but millions of people around the world were preparing too they remained fixated on the case and hopeful that justice for Kaylee was just around the corner. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the attorneys now will present their final arguments. The state may proceed. Thank you, sir. When you have a child, that child becomes your life. This case is about the clash between that responsibility and the life that Casey Anthony wanted to have. She took her life and she put her in the trunk and forgot about her. And she disposed of her body in a swamp. It is a trip down the rabbit hole into a bizarre world where men who love their granddaughters find them drowned and do nothing. This is the world that the defense invites you to occupy. Casey Anthony is guilty of murder in the first degree. I have to tell you that I probably think you have more questions than you have answers. It is extremely reasonable that she could have drowned in the pool. And that's where the state fails. They must rebut each and every reasonable hypothesis of innocence. They cannot rebut this. They're hoping they throw enough against the wall and see what sticks right down to their cause of death. One week it was chloroform. Today, it's duct tape. I'm not proud of the way Casey behaved. I don't think anybody here can justify her actions, but they do not constitute murder. The defendant is not required to present evidence or prove anything. Never forget, no matter what the issue is, they have all of the burden and there is none over here. Members of the jury, I would like to thank you for your attention during the trial. Please pay attention to the instructions I'm about to give you. The judge's job is to give the standard jury instruction. It's the prosecution or the defense to request a special instruction. One, would a special jury instruction indicating that proving how she died was not an element of the crime to be prudent to request a special instruction. One, would a special jury instruction indicating that proving how she died was not an element of the crime to be proven. I think that may have made a tremendous difference. I had already prepared that instruction, but when I got no request for that, I didn't figure it would come from the defense. I figured it would come from the state, but they never asked. They needed an instruction on how they can convict on a lesser charge, because Casey was looking at murder one, but she was also looking at basically negligent treatment of a child. Super easy to prove, but they didn't give- They charged her with too high of an offense. That's what broke this case. That. Members of the jury, you may retire now to begin your deliberations. <laughs> Cheney, do you think she's going to walk today? I'm just asking for a prediction, sir. Keep moving, please. Keep moving. Keep moving. Oh, 
it has been brought to my attention that the jury has reached a verdict. State? The state's ready to proceed, Your Honor. Defense? Defense is ready. Let's return the jury. It was totally quiet in the courtroom, and the jurors start coming in. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Have you reached a verdict? Sir. Would you hand the verdict form to the court deputy, please? There was this tension in the room. It was so quiet in that courtroom that you could hear a pin drop, except we could hear the helicopters from the local news stations circling around overhead. I actually read the jury verdict twice to make sure uh, that my eyes were not playing tricks on me. Would a defendant rise along with counsel? Madam Clerk, you may publish the verdicts. As to the charge of first degree murder, verdict as to count one, we the jury find the defendant not guilty. So when they said not guilty, I could hear 25 floors below the crowd outside, I could hear them gasp. <laughs> As to the charge of aggravated child abuse, verdict as to count two, we the jury find the defendant not guilty. As to the charge of aggravated manslaughter of a child, verdict as to count three, we the jury find the defendant not guilty. Then each count was being read as she's being found not guilty and not guilty. What went through my mind was, holy this is never going to go away. We are going to be talking about this. And I can see the prosecution getting more and more tense and more and more angry. And the cops who investigated the case were sitting two rows behind me. And one of them walked out and said to the other, that was some right there, because they were furious. Appeal! 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 One of the jurors indicated that the reason she found uh, the defendant uh, not guilty was because the state could not prove how the child died. I thought it was a travesty. I felt like the prosecution hadn't adequately explained circumstantial evidence because this was a circumstantial evidence case. I wasn't surprised. I was surprised at the total acquittal. And I think as prosecutors, we should have put everyone on alert. Be very careful before you recommend uh, prosecution on a death penalty. Had they charged Casey Anthony with manslaughter or second degree murder, ultimately the case may have resolved in another manner. I think she beat the system. Casey Anthony beat the system. She sat there trying to look like, you know, a choir girl the whole time and rain her hands and everything else. She lied to everybody. People hated her. People still hate her. There's not but uh, two people that know what happened. One is dead, that's Kelly, and uh, the other person is Casey. Maybe one day. And for the sake of that child, she will answer that question, what really happened? If I could ask Casey Anthony a question, I wouldn't ask her what happened to Kaylee. I'm not gonna get the truth from her. I would ask her, how do you sleep? How do you sleep each night? What haunts you, Casey? What did you do? The public outrage over Casey Anthony's verdict prompted the Florida legislature to pass Kaylee's law in 2012. That makes it a felony for a parent or a legal guardian to fail to report a missing child. Oh, man. I swear. I can never... I'm always like, oh, I'm going to rewatch or re-listen to the trial or... And I think like, oh, I've heard everything. And then it like gets to the ending and it's like. It feels like shit all over again. Um, if you like this kind of um, 
content, go ahead and give me a follow. I am trying to put out a couple of videos a week at least. Um, and you can just leave in the comments anything that you'd like me to cover, what you think about this case, um, anything about Casey Anthony, maybe what you think happened. Um, but yeah, I will see you in the next one.